I saw today two cops outside when I left the school. Yeah. And by the way, my friend David, he has a statement of the police that the police said the car in the morning when we opened the door. And the car in the morning when we opened the door. I told him, I shared with him my statement. I said, David, what is your company doing? So besides that, I was not a bad company. Same thing as mine. 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 And the whole, the whole system of the school, like the doors, the, the so windows what? are all, no, it's not sanitized, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's bulletproof. Oh, is it? Yeah, they changed it already a couple of years ago when oh, they started shooting in schools. They changed all the right, windows. Alright, guys, ready? Let's start. 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 Let's around the world, around our community in Queens. We still made the, the effort, and um, you came here tonight for this class. Obvious, we're gonna speak about the Holocaust that we have in Israel. And in purpose, I use the word Holocaust because <coughs> killing 1,000 Jews in one day never happened from the Holocaust times. This is not Yom Kippur War. Yom Kippur is nothing compared to what we're passing right now. Over 1,200 people are already dead. 200 captures. And missile, maybe already 5,000. In three days, 5,000 is over 1,000, almost, almost 1,500 missile a day. That is, uh, now the Hezbollah start from the Tzafon to shoot missiles. It looks like we're being attacked from Syria as well. Wow. All over. Yeah, and this is only the beginning. Wow. Behemoth is only the beginning. So what do we have to do right now? What do we have to do right now? First of all, I will start with two disclaimers that is very important to know. The first disclaimer is, one of the questions that I hate when people ask me, and I'm using the word hate, because I don't like, you know, we became so shallow or so lack of sensitive. Not in purpose, God forbid. Not from a bad will. Because life is too precious. So everybody asks you, do you have a family in Israel? No. I said, Baruch Hashem, thank God. What's mean you don't have family in Israel? Every Jew is your own family. We are one nation, one family. When they ask me, Rabbi, how is your family? I said, my family is in crisis. My family is literally in crisis. When I saw this old woman that they took to Gaza, she reminded me very much so of my mother. I believe that they're almost in the same age. And to see an old woman that going in, I felt like my mother went with her. No, and then frightened. So when you ask me how is your family, I just share with them downstairs. You know, in the last 10 or 11 years, being a rabbi in this beautiful community, the Bukharian community, that we are so lucky to be a rabbi here. I love this community dearly. But many of them act like Israelis. A little chutzpanim. They're calling me 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Not once, not twice. I got phone calls almost unlimited in these times. And my wife came to me and said, I don't understand, what a chutzpanim. What a arrogant, what a lack of respect. But they don't understand that the rabbi needs to sleep. For many years, I didn't know what to say. But now, I have a good answer to my wife. My daughter went this year to seminar in Australia. Australia is 12 hours ahead. If now is 9.30, and Australia is 9.30. But 9.30 a.m. And many times, by mistake, so not by mistake, she's calling me to my wife and to me, and especially to my wife. At one o'clock, two o'clock. She's not only calling, she's calling FaceTimes. <laughs> you know, for a woman to open FaceTimes when you wake up in the middle of the night, it's not the most pleasant moment. It's no wake up, makeup, it's no this. You know, usually a woman will never push the button of uh, FaceTimes at two o'clock in the morning. And my wife wake up and she's, you know, she's so happy, she's putting, 
And I was thinking, what a chutzpanit, my daughter. She's calling at two or three o'clock in the morning. She doesn't understand that the rabbi need to sleep. And the answer is, no. She is our daughter. And for me, every student of mine is my son. So the same way that we answer to our daughters and brothers and, 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 and sons, we have to answer for every Jew that calls you in this moment. Every Jew is your brothers and sisters. So from, when people ask you how is your family is doing, what's your answer? In crisis. crisis. My family pass the most difficult times in their life. This is one disclaimer. The second one is us being Sephardim, especially if you move, if you study Musar, Musar movement, and you start to explain why things happen in Simchat Torah. You know how many people I heard, Rabbi, do you know why it happened? That you saw the party that they had full moon? That you saw the Buddha? This is the reason. What a horrible way to say. What a huge mistake to explain. And I will prove it to you why this is a mistake. In our history, we are two generations. Many generations, but two generations that may be mentioned in the Gemara many times. The generation of David the Melech, King David. King David was a righteous man, right? As righteous that he can get. Do you know what the Gemara said? That every child in the generation of David the Melech knew the whole Shas scheme, the whole Torah, every child under 13. What today the biggest rabbi doesn't know? They knew it. In the age of 10, 11, or maybe even 8. And even though that everybody in King David's life was righteous, when they arranged a war against the enemies, when they went out, for a war, many times they lost. And even if they didn't lose, there are many people that got killed during the war. And a few generations later, the grandchild of David the Melech, his name is Achav Arasha. You know what you mean, Arasha? The sinner Achav. He was one of the worst king in our history. And all his generation was idol worship, not one Buddha on the top. Do you know what? They, they are not idol worship, the one that died. They put it because in India, this is what you do. They didn't do it in intention to worship. But they put it just to feel the way that, you know, they came from India. After the army, they're going in. I remember we went in with my wife. I was a rabbi in Hong Kong for two years. A minute before I left, I went into Thailand to meet all these few hundred thousand Israelis. We came here to see it every Shabbat, 400, 500 people. Beautiful, beautiful moment. Now, why they went over there? For these parties, full moons. They didn't went over there to look for Chabad house. Chabad house find them. <laughs> you cannot run away from Chabad. No matter where you're gonna run. The Rubi Zalubavitcher over there with Felin. My brother, you're a Jew. <laughs> Put food in, come Shabbat, come food, everything for free, just come. Listen to this. So they want to feel. And the generation of Achav and every small Giva, how do you say Giva Shlomit? Hill. Every small hill. Do you know how many hill they have in Israel? I don't know, maybe 10,000, maybe 100,000? And every hill he put idols to make sure that the whole Jewish nation will be worshipped. Idols. And Bata Mikdash was idols. Nobody served God in this generation. Nobody kept Shabbat. Nobody put the filin. They are all Rashaim and still, yet, when they range a war, they won every war. Achav conquered almost the whole entire world. And not only that, nobody died. And the Gemara said, I don't understand. What exactly happened? How can it be that in the Vidamelech generation, people die and they lost many war? And Achav Rasha. One of the worst kings, they won every war. And nobody died. And listen to the answer of the Gemara. And this generation, the generation of David, they spoke Lashonara. They hate each other. 
the generation of Ahab, they didn't keep nothing. But they never spoke bad about each other. You hear that? Idol worship the whole nations. Every hill they have idols. Nobody keeps Shabbat, nobody keeps Mitzvot, nobody keeps Tarat and Mishpach, and still nobody does. Why? Because everybody was in unity. I believe what brought, and I'm not here to explain. But Hezbollah said, the head of Hezbollah, I'm not going to mention his name, he's not worth it, worth it to be mentioned. He said like this, now the Jews, they are in the weakest point in their life. You know why? Because two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was protest almost every week against the government. 300,000 that hate the one other 300. It was 50% of Israel hate dearly the other 50%. When we are in separate, no matter if you keep the Roman vote, no matter what the size of the kippah and how many times you dip in the mikveh, no matter how many tefillin you, you, you put, one tefillin, two tefillin, no matter if you wake up in the nets or not, no matter if you eat kosher in the highest level, because God is not with you. A minute that we are separated, but we will leave the nations. But if you are separate, if you are unity, like now, unfortunately, after the attack, Suddenly you see the Jews in the most beautiful moment in their life. Never, I never saw so much love from Minchemet Yom Kippur. Everybody cared for each other. Free Shawarma, free Falafel, just come. Come and take whatever you want. All the Jews around the world sending money like it's not tomorrow. Sending batteries, sending clothing. It was a guy yesterday, two days ago, a Hasid that came to the airport and anyone like me IDF soldiers that got, that being called for the army, he pay his ticket for free. You know how much it cost him? Half a million dollar. Half a million dollar in one night. I'm sorry, 250. 260,000 dollars. And half tickets. Tickets. So how much it was? Half a million dollar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Half, 260 tickets cost them half a million dollar. One night. You never saw the Jews so unity and so love and so caring. And you see event downstairs, 180 ladies. If if the event was uh, upstairs, it was 300 ladies in five minutes. And every community, the whole community, everybody. Suddenly you see unity. And unity is the best moment. I have a good news to share with you. We're going to win this war because we are at unity. We are together. And when we are together, nobody can win against us. The reason that they had this power is not because we kept the Romans vote or not. We're not here to speak in the name of God. Yes, we have to keep Shabbat, and I will prove you that Shabbat is important. From 22 uh, uh, settlements around Gaza, 22 of them, 22 letters of the Torah, 20 of them, almost all of them got killed. And two of them, nobody died. Do you know why? Because these two was Shomra Shabbat. You know how I know that was Shomra Shabbat? The gate of the settlement was locked. If you're Shomra Shabbat, the first thing that you're doing is you lock down the gate because nobody is driving in and nobody is driving out on Shabbat. This is the sign. Now, they came in when? On Shabbat. The attack happened on Shabbat. They came in on Shabbat. They saw the gate. They tried to open it. You can see it in the camera. You can see it in the video. They didn't succeed, they leave. Why? They didn't want to go with no car because they have to run away. So if they're gonna go in with no car, with no motorcycle, how are they gonna run away? So they say, you know what, forget about it. Let's skip, skip to the next one. And they went to the next one and they skip the only two. Ki Eshmerah Shabbat and Ishmerani. When I'm keeping Shabbat, Bore Olam keep me. Bore Olam, protect me. This is a life proof that this is a met. A life proof that this is a met. They kept the Shabbat. Do you know why this year is so important to keep the Shabbat? Because this year is the one of the only years that we never had four species. We never made because the first day of Sukkot fell down, Shabbat. By the way, the only mitzvah to shake the four species is in the first day. The Oraita is the only time is the first day. So we never did it this year. We did it from the rabbis, we didn't do it from the Bible. 
The obligation of the Bible is ולקחתם לכם ביום הראשון. Take the first precious and the first day only. This year was no first precious. Not only that, this year it was no shofar. You're going to tell me, Rabbi, we remember that Rosh Hashanah, we heard the shofar. No, no, no. It was the second day. The first day of Shabbat was no shofar. Annoying to be that in the year that is no shofar. And the first day. Either or. Either they are the best years, or either they are not enough. And we're only in the beginning. Two weeks away. We are only in the beginning, and look the way that the, 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 the world changed. And one day, 1,000 Jews got slaughtered. Children, babies, parents, grandparents. I'm not going to tell you what they did and what they're doing to our people in captures in Gaza. You don't want to know. Nightmare. It's better for all of us not to watch these videos. Scary. You're not going to sleep at night. And not only that, it's not good for your soul and for your well-being. And purpose, they release all of it. They want us to get frightened. They want us to run our life, to ruin our life. But ladies and gentlemen, the first advice I'm going to give you, <coughs> after we got these two, how do I call it? Disclaimer. The first one is, we are all brothers and sisters. The second one, don't explain what God is doing. We have to increase love and unity. But I will tell you this one. And with this, I want to start. The first advice that I can give all of us is, Nose be'ol im chavero. You know what it means? Nose be'ol im chavero. I will explain. Nose. Australia. Australia. Did I spoke about my daughter? Yes. Ladies, gentlemen, listen to this. Ma, what is nose be'ol im chavero? Nosei Be'olim Chavero, meaning I saw a beautiful story. I don't know if you ever heard me sharing this story. Just let me listen to the story. Beautiful story that I shared once. It was in um, three years ago, Passover. Three years ago was the, the first time that COVID-19 broke out. When COVID-19 started Purim, and then Pesach, you ready? Became serious. So you remember Purim? Purim is when everybody got it. Mm -hmm. Because every all the party, everybody had COVID-19, nobody And everybody got it from each other. We are scared. <laughs> Pesach, the world was already shut down. It was this older woman, this older woman in Lakewood, New Jersey. Sephardic. She lived in Lakewood. She doesn't have no husband, but she has children and grandchildren. Usually, a woman that she is a widow, and she is a grandmother and a mother. What does she do in Pesach? She's either she's going to one of the children, or either the children coming to her. This is what she did for many years. But this year, the children say, "Emma, I'm sorry, we cannot come because you're in a very, very dangerous age. If you're going to get COVID-19, you most likely you're going to die." And children do not be in effect, and they don't even know that they have it. We are afraid from one, that one of our grandchildren will give you the COVID. So we definitely are not coming. Your life is in danger. She accepted, but this is the first time that she is alone in Passover. What all the women with no husband doing in Passover, let us say there, when usually it's a beautiful home, the whole children and grandchildren together. It's amazing, you don't understand. What exactly is she doing? Nothing. She said, okay, I'm going to cook small food. I'm going to read the Megillah, whatever I know, the Haggadah, whatever I know, and I'm going to go to sleep. Two hours before Passover, somebody is knocking the door. Who is knocking the door? The neighbor. A rabbi, Ashkenaz rabbi. He said, ma'am, we know that tonight you are alone. How do you call it in Bukhari and Hamshoi? He said, we know that today you're alone. If we can ask you nicely to leave your door open, we're going to leave our door open. 
bring, we're gonna take the table, is he helper? To take the tables all the way to the door, and we're gonna take the table all the way, and we're gonna celebrate Passover together. And two different homes, but because we're close, you can hear, and you can join, and you're gonna see my children, the way that they ask in Manish now. Wow, she had the tears of happiness. She didn't believe it. The holiday passed through. And then the son is calling her and says, Emma, he was thinking, maybe I'm calling right now my mama, my mother, she's going to be depressed. He's calling his mother. And the mother said, so she is asking, Emma, how was the holiday? She said it was great, it was amazing, it was incredible. How can you be incredible with no children and grandchildren? He already felt offended. <laughs> well, we did so bad. I mean, we, we, do, we come in every year to make you happy and you tell me incredible? What exactly we did? So listen to this, the mother said, you don't understand? The neighbor did something that I didn't see for 25 years. So what exactly the neighbor did? He said, you don't understand what exactly the neighbor He made Passover with the tune, with the Moroccan tune. Baby, we are telling me with all the ceremony, with all the minagim of Moroccan, when they dip the wine, when they're going outside to break the glass. You know, each, each one of us, Bukharian, have a different tradition. The Passover is the day of tradition. He said all the song in the Moroccan heritage. He did it Sephardic styles. Don't ask me how this rabbi is Ashkenaz. I know him for 50 years. I never knew that he knew to say the Agadah. The, the Agadah Shet Pesach and the Sephardic tunes. It was so nice. He did it exactly like your father 25 years ago when he died. Did it. When you came to me, you never did it. And he did it precisely. You know what the son did? The son said, Ima, you're not going to believe. He said, what? He said, now I understand why one day before Passover he called me two hours on the phone and I teach them everything that Abba did. And he asked me how your father did that and why. I never, I never understood what exactly he's doing, this guy. Maybe he have some practice, maybe he have a test, maybe here, maybe there. Why did he have to go? He's Ashkenaz. To feel, to carry the burden of your fellow Jew. To carry the burden of your fellow Jew, unreal. If this is so, gentlemen, tomorrow morning is a fast among all the Jews in Israel. The Rabbanut ask the chief rabbi of Israel with all the Rabbanut, with all the rabbis, requested that every Jew that can, it's no obligation, but every Jew that can will accept upon himself fast. But I said even better. Even if you cannot fast tomorrow, and even if it's difficult, minimum is take the enjoyment out. Take the enjoyment out until the war is going to pass. We have to feel the pain of our fellow Jews. You cannot, in the next few months, go to a vacation. It's the highest level of chutzpah. This is chutzpah, when Jews dying every day, when missing is passing through, and you in Florida or Bora Bora, Mexico, making avocations, you have to kill the avocation. If you have happiness moment, don't dance like it's not tomorrow. You have to go to a wedding, go to a wedding, but stay preserved. Don't dance like it's not tomorrow. They have Jews, I will tell you, don't spend money for nonsense, I'm not saying, you know, do not go with your wife to a restaurant, but definitely be a little conservative. And everything, don't buy a brand new car right now, or brand new watch, 25,000, just to prove that you're rich. There are some people that have nothing to eat. Gentlemen, we have to feel. Imagine yourself that each one of us will accept that if we're gonna go to a restaurant, we're not gonna order cakes and ice cream. How do you call these cakes? with the chocolate and ice cream on top? Souffle. Who can eat souffle <laughs> when Jews die in Israel? I didn't ask you not to eat the steaks. Maybe it's too much. 
or not to eat Oshpelo, suicide. I'm not going to ask you to give up the Oshpelo. But minimum, souffle, chutzpah. Mehmet chutzpah. We have to feel the pain of our brothers. Start with the small details in life. You make a bar mitzvah to one of your children, 100%. Conservative. Conservative. Nobody have right in these days to spend 100,000 or 300,000 dollars to a wedding. You have no rights anymore. If we didn't get the message in COVID-19, when the whole world collapsed and many people did today cannot live and nobody cares, at least now, to be sincere to our fellow Jews, to our brothers and sisters, that fighting for their life, that they have no jobs, they cannot leave their houses, that they right now going into the army to sacrifice their life in order that all of us here is going to have a home. You have to carry the burden of your friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very important topic. It's a very important message. Some of us, we are so weak that we not even feel the burden of our wife. When your wife complaining, you look. I don't understand why, why, why are you complaining? Why are you so, why are you so sad? She is wife. When your wife have a pain and you don't even feel, you continue. Why do you care? I'm going with my friends. You know how many times I saw it? The wife is crying at home and the guy is going with his friends to play card the whole night, to go to Vegas, to go to Atlantic City. Not for business. I'm with my friend, who cares? How can you be with your friend when 50% of you are sitting down and crying? What a weak feeling we can have. How far we can go with this lack of sensitivity? I told you, it's very dangerous these times. That's what I can say. For us to be chutzpanim. We have to put our sensitivity in the highest level. Not only because now you get, you get in the message that this Friday, God forbid, is going to be the Black Fridays of the Jews. Now they, are, they send a message that every Jew around the world have to be afraid because the all the Arabic... Nonsense. Not because of that. And many of us, many of us does get afraid. This is what they want. They want you to be afraid. No, we're not afraid. We are Jews, we are proud, and we are living, and we always go, Am Israel Chai. Generation, they try to kill us. The Arab is not going to be the last, the first one, and not the last one, don't worry. Generation, they start to, all of them is in the history books, and we are still here. And we're going to continue to be here. To make sure that when we're going to read, once upon a time, it was all these terrorists, that their history, and we are still alive. 100% this is what's going to happen. Because this is what's happened until now. But at the same time, we have to have sensitivity. We have to be a little conservative. The next few months, you're moving into a new home, a little sensitivity. Don't buy the best kitchen, the best this, the best. A little sensitivity. The world is at war. The war in Israel just starts just start. I'm afraid not because what's happened. I'm afraid for what's going to happen. I'm very nervous for what's going to happen. Being IDF soldiers, I'm telling you, I'm very, very afraid because I saw the army and I know exactly what's the power of the army and how far they can go. Our terrorists. They're waiting for us to go in. They're waiting for us to go in. Don't think. They say, welcome. Fat them. All Gaza is one big, big, uh, big weapons, big bombs. Every place in Gaza, they have bombs, and in every windows, they will have a, a somebody, a, a snipers to shoot at us. Missile, and they have unlimited weapons. For ten years they built for this war. For ten years they planned this war. The last year, all what they did is to get to this moment. And they have unlimited. They sent five thousand missiles in three days. They don't even feel the... You know what it means to say? You know how much money it costs? They are millions, billions. Unreal. But we have God. We have God. It's the good news. 
and we have each other, and we care for each other, and we are sensitive. So in the next week or so, maybe in the next, next month or so, maybe in the next three months, be a little conservative. In the spending, and in the party that you show up. And if you already go to weddings, go and dance five, ten minutes, just to respect and that's it. Don't get wild in the dance. Simchat Torah was supposed to happen twice. Every year we have Simchat Torah and the end of the holidays for all the older people that they need it. They didn't come to the synagogue in the morning. This year we cancel it. It's a chutzpah to dance when we have 1,200 people die. We have to have some, we have to realize that our own family gets slaughtered one by one. Forty babies die when they chop off all their heads and later on they put a bump. Animals, our babies, unreal. And you're gonna go into a vacation and you're gonna have even to dare, you bought a ticket, cancel the tickets. I'm talking to the thousands of people that listen to me right now. You bought cancel the tickets. You need to buy shoes? Buy simple shoes. Easy, schmeasy, all this nonsense. We buy shoes from people that hate us. And we pay $300. I mean, again, we are not normal. It's not real. The guy hates us dearly and he claim all over the world. And we're going to pay $700 for shoes. Stupid shoes. Please. You need shoes? Ladies, you need a bag? Buy a defect one from China. I will only say it, buy a defect one. But you want to feel good, you want to feel rich, 3,000, 4,000. Do you have right now to spend 5,000 when people in Israel have nothing to eat? Do you know what the chutzpah is that? What the audacity is that? To ask your husband, Rabbi Shalom, which Shalom buy it? What exactly is so bad with the normal bank? No, throughout the years I'm not complaining. You're making money, you give donation, leave. Your husband needs to respect you. Leave, live well. But now, if you have extra 5,000, extra 10,000, send it to Israel. They need it. They need it in order to survive. They don't need it to buy fancy schmancy back. They need it to survive, to be alive in other days or in other few days because of your money. Unreal. Gentlemen, ladies, is a wake up call is a call for actions for each one of us. And I will end with a message to all of us. Because it cannot be that you came here to a couple class and you're not going to get a certain message. Might be the greatest message for us being a couple. The Lubavitch Rebbe was very into increasing the level of happiness. Not falling down in depression right now, just the opposite. Be happy, be serving God with even more happiness. How can you be happy in these crisis? And the Rebbe said just the opposite. Happiness, open all the pipe. You want to see miracles? Happiness, open it. They said that sadness, close door. Prayer, open doors. And happiness, break walls. You hear that? At Zvut, Sugeret Dlatot. If your parnassah is difficult, if your shalom bite is difficult, if your children's education is difficult, if your health is difficult, you know why? Because you said. When you said, even the normal door, that they're open, you're closing. Sadness is forbidden. Now, prayer, open doors. The door that you close because you are uh, sad, you can open to tefillah. But you know what even stronger from tefillah? Happiness. Happiness break walls. So if I'm going to ask you, and the holidays of Sukkot that we just passed, we are three levels of happiness. The first day of Sukkot, we have to be happy from the Bible or from the rabbis? Ladies and gentlemen, from the rabbi or from the Bible? The Bible. We have Sukkah, we have the four species. So we have to be happy. It's an obligation by God. Now, during the seven days of Sukkot, we have to be happy by the Bible or by the rabbis? After the first day. Who is that? 
מדרבנן, ביוטיפול, פרום דרבנש. שמחת בית השואל בא, אם אתה הולך לקראונייטס, או לווינרסבורג, או לבורו פארק, אתה רואה אנשים דנסים כל הלילה. זה היה מדהים. They call it Simchat Bet HaShoeva. They carry the water and there was happiness in Bet HaMikdash from the rabbis. Now, Simchat Torah. Dancing with the Torah in the holidays. He was from the rabbi or from the Bible? Anyone know? Simchat Torah. Yes. Simchat Torah. 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 Which one? Torah. Bible. I have a great news to tell you. Anyone know the answer? Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is a fast day, if you can fast. But maybe Friday morning, we we'll get free breakfast. Sponsored by our dear fellow Jew. My brother. My brother. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is from the rabbi or from the Bible? It's a minhag, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> A minute I said free breakfast. <laughs> This is what happened when your daughter is in Australia. <laughs> By the way, she's going with her husband. <laughs> May God bless her husband as well, Ms. Otherson. To have a long life and a healthy life. Amen. May they go and have shalom by it until 120. Amen. And may they go and raise their children. The Torah and the Chupan and the Masim Tuvim. Amen. Amen. So, באמת, it's not from the Bible, and it's not even from the rabbis. There's no place in the Shukhan Aruch, no place in Gemara that mentions that there's any obligation to dance in Simchat Torah. It's tradition. Minag. Now I'm going to ask you the question, listen to the questions. In which part of Sukkot we are as happy as that we can get? That we are the most happy? In the first day, or during the seven days, or in Simchat Torah? Is there any logic to it? God is asking you to be happy, you are happy. The rabbi asks you to be happy, you are happy the whole night. The tradition asks you to, wow, you dancing, wow, you jumping. I don't understand. Logic is supposed to be the difference. When God asks you, you have to do it with the most. And then go slowly, slower and slower, lower and lower, right? So why in Simchat Torah were the most happy? Ladies and gentlemen, what is your, what, what is your wife's name? Natalie. 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 And which, not position, which um, incident, your name is? Rachamim. Rachamim. And which incident you realize that Rachamim loves you the most? When you ask him to do something and he's doing uh, directly, you ask him to wash dishes, you ask him to keep the babies, and he's doing always what you ask. Oh, when you give him a hint, you know, when a woman is going next to a windows and the store and the street and she tells you, what the beautiful windows, <laughs> she doesn't care about the windows. Is it a beautiful dress or is it a diamond? It's not the windows. When a woman going around the store seven times, She give you a hint. Hopefully the wall of Yericho will fall down and you're going to get the message to buy me something. Right? When a woman hints you that, you know, very soon is my birthday, because she's giving you a hint to get the message, you have to take me out to a vacation, you have to spend money on me. Right? In which place situation. you are... Situation. Si si situation. 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 Your husband, Racham, proved that he loves you the most. When you ask, when you hint, or when you know you so well that you don't ask and don't heal. You wake up in the morning, breakfast in the bed, cappuccino, mochaccino, chococino, sunny side up, sunny side down, and you put the music that you love and you give it to you. Which way? <laughs> Natalie, which one? Um, I think probably, I think one and two. Which one? And the hint? Nice. I told you that your wife is unique. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I should try. Gentlemen, ladies, when you know, you know, in the beginning, how do you know that? I will prove it to you. 
When you just get married, you need your wife to tell you everything that you want. Details. Because you're a dumb dumb, you don't understand nothing. <laughs> With the heels, you start to get to know your wife, she's giving you a hint, and you get the message. It takes years for a man to realize the message. And later on, when you're 22 years of marriage, like me and my wife, you don't need to say, you don't need to hint. I love my wife so much. And I know my wife so well, and she knows me. That's we're going to do before you're going to ask and before you're going to hint. This is the highest level by far. If you need to hint me, me meaning, he doesn't have it, he doesn't get it. If you don't need to hint, wow, you are there, you are there. Even though, even though, even though, if he didn't do it, if he didn't do it, you cannot punish him. Because he's not obligated. You didn't tell him to do it. And if you told him and he doesn't do it, you're going to get upset with him. But I told you ten times why you don't do it. I agree. When God is asking us to do, and we don't do, the punishment is severe. You know why? Because I asked you direct. Obvious, the punishment is in the first level. But the reward? You know what Simcha Torah? Simcha Torah will be telling God, you never ask. You never even given us a hint. We know you so well that we know that what, this is what you want. You want us to be happy with the Torah. This is your essence. God, we know you so well. What a beautiful explanation of the Rabbi Cherub. No others. A brilliant explanation. Ladies and gentlemen, my blessing to you is that your wife will never need, or your husband will never need to tell you anything direct. And your husband will never need to hint anything. That you're going to know your husband so well. And, he, you, and he's going to know you so well, ladies. That he will surprise you before you even ask and need. What a beautiful message of happiness. What a beautiful message in Shalom Bayt. What a beautiful message of, of Sukkot. The message of Sukkot is our connection is much greater from anything else. I will end by reminding all of us. How is your family? My family is in crisis. My family is good. I have no families in Israel. What a shame is even to say it. You have no family. The eight and a half million Jews, or nine million, they are not your family suddenly? No. Our family is the whole nine million. Jews that live in Israel, and every Jew around the world. So how is our family? Our family is a fight. Fight for the home and fight for their survival. And in my family, we lost 1,200 brothers and sisters, adults, children, grandparents, and parents. And in my family, they have 200 brothers and sisters that they are in captures. The second thing is don't try, don't try to explain what exactly happened right now in Israel. It's not our job to explain. Our job is to increase the level of unity. To increase the level of love to each other. Beautiful. We just came here today and I forgot to invite food. Three minutes later, the food is on the way. Somebody decides to take it upon himself. This couple of Hashem to have a long life and a healthy life. To get to Hashem. What's your name? Miriam and David. David. David Miriam, David Miriam Israel Chavikam, Baruch Hashem Miriam and Nevia, the Prophet Miriam and David Miriam Israel, King David. We just spoke about King David. Baruch Hashem, King David decides to take upon himself or not. He didn't ask me. He didn't get permission. A Jew is a Jew. He went inside, outside. He called all his children. I ordered all the rabbi is at my expense. Jews, brothers, sisters, unity. And remember, you know when your relationship is good. When your spouse doesn't have to ask and doesn't have to eat. I love you and I know you God so well. That our relationship will be internal relationship until 120. May the Almighty God will bless all of us. Amen. We'll bless the soldiers in Israel. Amen. We'll bless all the people of Israel, our brothers and sisters. We'll bless all the prisoners that the Almighty God will make sure that we'll release them as soon as possible. Amen. And hopefully, 
This is the greatest of them. That Mashiach is going to come as soon as possible before we're going to enter Gaza. Because the minute that we're going to enter Gaza, history will never be the same. What we saw until now is only introduction. Frightened from how far this world can, can, can go. Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, and all of them right now just waiting to start with this one. Not for no reason, the president of America sent one ship, the biggest ship in the world, with uh, 80 different uh, uh, air, air, aircraft, and another one is on the way. They know something. You can smell it in the air. I don't want to call it World War III, but we are in a glimpse of being so close to it, so close to this war. So let's hope that Mashiach, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said many times, we don't have to pass Gog or Magog. You know why? Because the Holocaust was good enough. We lost too many Jews, six million Jews. And from the Holocaust, so many Jews die throughout, if you, you don't remember, you're not Israelis, the bomb and the buses. I grew up to this intifada. Almost every day, 20 to 25 Jews went into the bus and the whole bus with the needles. We're dealing with animals and we always try to negotiate with them like human beings, but they are not. We have to wake up in the morning and realize we're not dealing with normal people. You want to kill, you kill. But why do you have to come with a hammer and cut the head and cut and do it? And after that, I'm not going to tell you the horrible things that they did over there. The President of the United States was in shock when he saw the pictures and they sent them and the pictures. We're dealing with ISIS. It's not Hamas and it's not Hezbollah, it's ISIS. But Borei Olam is with us. And this is the good news. Am Israel Chayvekem. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have the... I believe it's small. Yes. Are you smelling it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please do not leave before you take in the, the sure. dinner with you. But um, uh, how many people did the prayer of it? We don't know many. We don't know many. Shush, maybe we have. I'm going to stay. If you need a bit, I'm going to stay. Okay, gentlemen, please be seated. First, I have a story. Beautiful story to share. 
And I believe that this story connected to us. Okay? Gentlemen, listen to this. Stomit? Stomit, call him, call him inside. Let me know when to start. Can we do it? Yeah, you can start. We have the... Everything is live stuff. You don't have to press anything. You just put it on your time. No, no, I close it. As long as the green light is on, you're good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. I believe that this story fit the moment that we're passing right now. And this is how great is the Jewish nation. One day I call my friend, Rabdovid Rothschild, from the famous Rothschild family. He signed a note with my student, and I am the one that, one of the rabbis that officiated the weddings, it was Rabbi Hillel, Rosh Kubalim, and me. And from this moment, we became some friendly. And I called them one time, the Franklin family and the uh, Rothschild family. And I told them, Rabdovid, Rabdovid, share with me a story. He said, Rabbi Wagner, I have a great story to share with you. And it was a perfect story a minute before Yom Kippur. And I believe that this is perfect story for now. Listen to the story. They went for three weeks, I believe, to Israel for a vacation. These two family, but they are a very wealthy family in Canada. And they took the rabbi with them. And this rabbi is American or Canadian rabbi. He doesn't like the Israeli coffee so much. You know, in Israel, they have a coffee, cafe, and a mess. They didn't like it. So he came into the hotel in Teveria, and he asked the bellboy, do we have, that's a choice, how do you call it, Dunkin' Donuts, America Run and Dunkin', uh, Starbucks, give me something else. What do you have when you ask a friend in the hotel? He said, yes, in the store you can buy. He gave them a hundred dollars and he said, buy me two, two, two bucks and the rest keep it for you. The guy was so happy, forty dollars or fifty dollars, stay in his pocket. He said, wow, this is the greatest tip. He's running. He said, no, no, before you run him, what is your name? I don't want you to disappear. I don't know you. He said, my name is Yohanan Ben Zakai. What a name. What your parents, the guy is not religious. Rabbi Yohanan Ben Zakai was one of the biggest rabbi in our history. Such a name, Yohanan Ben Zakai, when you have tattoos all over, when you have earring here and earring here, when you have long hair. He said, how did you become Rabbi Yohanan Ben Zakai, Yohanan Ben Zakai? He said, Rabbi, do you have a time to hear the story? He said, I have all the time of the, forget about the coffee, just, just sit here, I want to hear the story. He said, Rabbi, Rabbi, I'm 16 years old. And 17 years ago, 17 years ago exactly, my parents went to romantic vacation in Tzfat. The city of Tzfat is a beautiful city. Very holy, very inspiring. After Shabbat, when they finished the, the vacation, they went back home. But they got bumped in to, to traffic. But not regular traffic. Bumper to bumper, a half an hour. Bumper to bumper, a half an hour. You never saw something like this. After three hours that they barely move, there was a policeman over there, you know, directed, the, directed all the cars. They opened the windows. And this guy is a Sephardic policeman. He said, excuse me, what's the reason we have such a traffic? Is there any accident? He said, no. So what's the reason we have so thousands of cars? He said, ma'am, you don't know what is today? She said, no. What the you don't really know what exactly happened to me. what is the trivial questions? Tell me what exactly happened today. I don't know. He said, tonight, uh, today, today is the Yenuna of Rabbi Shimon Baruch Hai. And Rabbi Shimon Baruch Hai promised anyone that come to my grave and the day of my Hiluna, my Yeshua, will get any request that he wants. The woman looked at the husband and she said, religious or not, we have to go to Rabbi Shimon. Why? Fifteen years they had no children. Today we're going to Rabbi Shimon. They travel into Rabbi Shimon six hours later. Almost the end of the days, they stop in another policeman. He said, how long is it going to take us to get? He said, ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you. Today you're not going to make it. 
So why not? He said, because today half a million Jews going to Rabbi Shimon. They locked down Meron, only buses, and now even buses cannot go. You're late. What do you mean I'm late? I want to go to Rabbi Shimon. The other policeman told me, he said, ma'am, I will give you a good news. Ten minutes away from here, if you're going to make right. And he's empty, he's not happy. They have Rabbi Yochanan ben Zekai go to him. She's looking at the husband, she's not religious. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yochanan, all of them is rabbis. Let's go to Rabbi Yochanan. She's driving into Rabbi Yochanan, and she washed the grave. And she opened the book of Tehidim. And after she is about to leave, she said, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, Ata levad v'anachnu levad. You are lonely and I'm lonely. You are lonely because today nobody came to you. Everybody went to Rabbi Shimon. Today the grave was empty. And we are lonely because 15 years we have no children. The same way that we came today to make you happy, make sure to make us happy. Nine months later exactly, she conceived and under, the name of the baby is what? Yohanan ben Zekai. Bore Olam, you are lonely and we are lonely. You are lonely because you will never find a nation like us. A nation that passed the Holocaust. A nation that passed the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. A nation that passed Russia, Babylon, Greek, Persia. Anyone that tried and we still believe in you. A nation that 3,000, three days ago passed one of the most horrific days in our history. 1,200 Jews die in one day for no reason in the most horrible way. And not only that they're not going away from you, they come even closer. Do you see the soldiers of Tzad with Talit, with Filin? What a beautiful nation. For Shad Khala, 180 ladies, she wore a Torah. Unreal. Nobody asked. And God, without you, we are lonely. Because our life without you equals zero. Gentlemen, 11 years ago, before I became a rabbi in this community, they invite me to come to the hospital. I believe they call it Queen's Hospital. I don't know. In Main Street, they have a big hospital. New York Hospital. New York? New York Hospital. New York Hospital. I came here. A Bukharian Jew. I don't know him the first time I met him. His father fighting for his life. I told this Bukharian Jew, his name is Yohanan. Yohanan ben Zakai. Yohanan, listen to this. If you're going to keep Shabbat, if you're going to accept Shabbat, me and him crying and dancing, your father is coming out from the hospital. You have nothing to worry. Shabbat is the power. Ladies and gentlemen, he accepted upon himself Shabbat. You know what exactly happened? During Shabbat, his father passed away. And I promised him that everything is going to be okay. Moshe Shabbat is calling me. I do not answer the phone. I'm afraid to answer. What a disappointed. He's going to call me, screaming at me, Rabbi, you lying. No, I never ask money. When people have issues, everybody knows Rabbi Wagner. I never ask money. I don't use your very vulnerable times in life to make cash. But I will ask you to do mitzvot. Taharat ha-mishpacha, kashut, tefillin, accept something. So I ask him Shabbat. But instead of his father having a long life, he passed away in that Shabbat. I was so afraid he's called me once, twice, three times. I didn't want to answer the phone. It's hack. After four times, my wife said, is that nice? He maybe have something important. I already heard. Maybe he want to talk to you. His father just passed away. Is that nice? You don't answer the phone. I answered the phone, shaking. I said, Yohanan, how can I help you? He said, Rabbi, tomorrow is the, is the funeral, and you are the only rabbi that I want to come to speak. You touch my heart. What a strange Jews, huh? <laughs> what a beautiful Jews. What a beautiful, he invited me, and I was the only speaker, and after that, he's the first one that gave us a Sefer Torah for the Yud Minyan. He's the first sponsor for Sefer Torah for the Yud Minyan. And his son, keeping Shabbat, keeping Kashrut and everything, because of what? Because of that Shabbat. God is lucky to have such a nation. A nation that do not ask any questions. A nation that believe in God, even in the most difficult moment in their life. Bore Olam, how lucky you are. Because without us, you're lonely. Nobody will serve you the way that we serve. And without you, we are nothing. 
Hopefully the Almighty God will make sure that He's going to be with us. And we're going to be with Him. Until 120. Until Beat Moshe said, Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.